Hello again, I am Blunty. Final patch for Monster Hunter Rise has just landed. It's out now on Switch and will come tomorrow for Steam. Patch version 10.0.2 and 10.0.2.0 on the platforms respectively. And well, I, I say final patch, but really it's just the final patch to base Rise before the new expansion Sunbreak launches tomorrow. It brings with it a whole bunch of changes, longest list of patch notes I've seen for this title to date. And while a lot of it, of course, is tied directly to Sunbreak specific stuff, there's a big pile of stuff that even those who have not yet purchased Sunbreak will also get for free as well. Chief amongst these changes is a big list of weapon balancing and other adjustments like changes to combos and such. Far too many to dig through in this video, so you can check those out for the weapons you care about most or news in the patch notes, which I'll link below. But as the last video I'll make about base Monster Hunter Rise, I wanted to bump through some of my favorite changes these patches are bringing because a lot of them are really nice quality of life things, but I've been gasping for for quite some time. First notification you get is a free character edit voucher, of which there was already one in the store if you hadn't noticed that yet, but a new one just in case you use that other one already. And this is important because the patch brings some new character customization options, new hairstyles, new makeup, new face paint, new facial hair, I can't wait to see what that is, new eyebrow options, although it seems like these are only actually available to those who actually get Sunbreak, as I couldn't see them in the editor for Base Rise. I suspect the patch just in includes support for displaying them in base rise, so when Sunbreak plays multiplayer with base rise only players, which is still totally possible by the way, they can still appear correctly. Oh well. Then we get some new high rank versions of the Black Belt gear. I did a whole video on the basic version of the Black Belt gear recently. This is just a high rank version of that to help returning players burn through the base game fast to get to Sunbreak content. It is not recommended for brand new players though. They're a little bit OP and it'll give you a false sense of how the game flows and might give you some bad habits about tanking some hits you shouldn't really be tanking. We also get some Elgado themed layered armor for ourselves, just a shirt and pants unfortunately, which seems weird, but you know, whatever, they do happen to work quite nicely with the mixed layered set that I've already been wearing recently, so I'm pretty chuffed about that. And of course we get some for our buddies too, although once again, they're not complete sets, just a vest for the cat and a collar for the dog. They are nice though, so you know, whatever. There's a supply kit. There'll also be another supply kit in Sunbreak for those of you who've played the demo, by the way. So two supply kits, really. Onto new menu options, including hit effects. Hooray! Finally, we can turn down the splashy anime style over the top hit effects from both our own weapons and those of other players, each discreetly adjustable. I do kind of wish you could turn them down lower than 25% though, but you know, I'll take what I can get, I guess. Very welcome change all the same that will help with visibility, especially on hunts for the smaller monsters. Oh, and no more forced wave and raiding. Now we can make it so we can just keep attacking when the ride state triggers instead of just triggering a mount if you even so much as look at the monster sideways on a sad day when you're thinking about ice cream. Both the hit effects options and the new mount options were actually in the Sunbreak demo and were fantastically welcome. They are both options I adjusted before I even went into my first fight in the demo. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to them that much. Oh, and hey, finally we get an on-screen UI element to actually tell us how many Dango tickets we have stocked up, you know, before we use them. So that's quite nice as well. Oh, and a much requested talisman lock feature finally arrives today as well to save you from accidentally or clumsily deleting or recycling your best talismans or talismans you think just might be handy sometime in the future. So you just want to make sure you don't accidentally churn them through the system again. Really, really welcome. That really should have been there since day one, in my opinion, but better late than ever, I guess. Speaking of, melding specific items now display first on the list when selecting materials at the melding pot, so you can more easily burn through those which have no other use in the game except for talisman farming before you use materials that are useful for other things also. That is a very, very specific but very, very welcome change there as well. The number of amiibo you can use each day at the market has been increased to six. Of course, with Sunbreak coming with three new amiibo to join the existing three from Base Rise, this makes sense. Although, it seems, at least right now, the lottery it triggers is still limited to three a day in Base Rise. I don't know if Base Rise is going to change when Sunbreak rolls out and the actual extra amiibos are released, or whether it will always be limited to three unless you upgrade to Sunbreak. 
Either way, I expect all six in Sunbreak will trigger a lottery roll. But this one is one of those wait and see kind of things, I suppose. We'll know tomorrow, I suppose. New features for the camera, including one I've been begging for, being able to just disable the camera UI overlay. Um, maybe only super useful or interesting to some folk out there, but for content creators like me, oh yeah, we're all very excited about this. It opens up a lot more options for when we're creating content. Plus, there are some other camera features too, like making your buddies and any NPCs in frame with you turn to face the camera, so that's also really nice. If you're on PC, you also get a whole bunch more options, including depth of field, background blurring, and a bunch of new filters and stuff. Sadly, Switch doesn't get that. Oh, well. Another highly requested feature, a new option to perform wall running without using a wire dash first and burning one of your bugs. And you can further customize how this works too. So for example, you can stop auto wall running if you've got your weapon out, because that would be a pain in combat for a lot of people. You can turn off auto running altogether and just do it the old way, or you can just turn it off during combat, regardless of your weapon sheathing situation. Also, massive improvements to changing direction while wall running, which is much more responsive now, and latching onto a wall if you hit one while falling. Works perfectly now to hooray for that, thank goodness. Keeps getting better. Recovery items with drinking animations like potions now can't be accidentally used when they won't actually do anything for you. So no accidental potion sucking while on full health anymore. Doesn't happen to me often, but I have wasted a few potions by doing that, I will admit. The items that won't help you at the time, but still have team effects, can still be used when your health is full and whatnot, so, you know, that doesn't interfere with that stuff, which is also good. You can't accidentally drink two Mega Demon drugs or armor skins if their effect is already active. I've done that before a few times to accidentally drink two of these precious potions. Very annoying. Can't do that anymore. The game won't let you. Your player character just looks at the bottle and goes, yeah, actually, no, no, not right now, thanks. I'm full. Couldn't drink another drop, mate. Of course, this also means things like no more wasted mulberries. You, you get the idea. It's, it's really nice. They'll also stop playing the full drinking animation of things like potions if you only need a little heal. So no more having to roll cancel out of the full animation anymore. Really, really nice. You just, the animation plays for as long as you need to drink to recover to your full health or until the potion is gone, whichever comes first. Oh, and one of my biggest bugbears has finally been fixed. If you've ever watched me stream this game, you'll hear me screaming at my dog <laughs> when I'm trying to mount the damn thing to sharpen in the middle of combat or whatever. The amount of time it takes to mount your Palamute by holding down the button or triggering it via the action bar or whatever has been decreased massively. So it's now much faster and much, much, much more reliable now. The Palamute just digs up right underneath you if he's too far away instead of manually and rather inconsistently trying to pathfind all the way over to you like it used to. This is a huge improvement. Can't understate it. I love this. The weapon tree window at the smithy now loops back to the opposite side, both left to right and top to bottom when moving the cursor past the edge of the window horizontally or vertically, making navigating these trees much easier and much faster. And I appreciate that one a lot. And I'm sure I'll appreciate it even more when these lists get expanded massively by all the new master rank options we'll be getting tomorrow. The patch notes are extensive, including, of course, squishing a few more little bugs and whatnot. I would encourage you to have a flip through them. There's lots of interesting stuff there that may or may not be interesting to you. It's good to know about these things instead of, you know, just stumbling through the game for hours and hours and hours and hours until you finally stumble across it or someone does and you go, oh, I didn't know you could do that. Well, this is how you find out about some of this stuff. It's buried in the menus and if you go looking for it, you'll find it. But, you know, it's also helpful to know that you should be looking for these changes, I suppose. So, yeah, read the patch notes. Or, you know, don't read the patch notes and just rely on content creators like me to tell you all about the nifty things. Because, <laughs> you know, we need the views. <laughs> I guess mostly I just wanted to share a few of the nice quality of life things that even non-Sunbreak players are getting today. Plus, uh, you can probably hear in my voice, I'm pretty hyped about the new expansion. Can't wait to play it tomorrow. I'll be streaming it tomorrow. Of course I will. Over on twitch.tv slash bluntnate. I would love it if you came along and, and check me out there. Give me a follow. You'll get notified when I go live. Follow me on Twitter. I'll post when I go live there as well. Come hang out, see the new stuff, have a chat about it, explore it with me. See how excited I get. See if I get overexcited. <laughs> but let me know what you're most excited about with the uh, new expansion. Uh, try to avoid spoilers in the comments if you can. Some people, you know, are more sensitive about that than, than some of others. But, um, you know, you can just say, oh, I'm looking forward to a certain new monster. And, you know, don't necessarily mention my name. Maybe, maybe, maybe be a good guy. <laughs> and if you are going to be a dick about things, expect your comment to be deleted. Because that's the way I roll. Not to worry about you spoiling me, but I will look after my other viewers. <laughs> Either way, hope to see you all on stream or on my next video here on the YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, as always, to the patrons. Go link above there. Hopefully you found this interesting or just entertaining. I am Blunty. Thank you again for watching, and I will catch you next time.